definitely the first take. This is the Big Friendly Swim Podcast. I'm the Big Friendly host, and today's <laughs> guest is the now ASU head coach and former an alumni for the team, Herbie Bem. How are you? I'm great. Yeah, great. How about you? I'm doing good. Thanks for being here. Like you said, in definitely our first, definitely not our first take. Like you <laughs> said, it was great meeting you in person. I'm glad I got to shake your hand and say hi. Yeah. I'm really excited with everything you've been doing. Like it's been great to see how the team has been progressing. Thank you so much. Yeah, that means a lot. It's been um yeah, it's been been crazy, but it's been a ton of fun. So talk to me about those first moments when you were told, hey, you're gonna be the head coach of the team. And what were the emotions that came in for you after that happened and when it became a reality? Yeah. Um I mean when it happened. I think there, like I had, I feel like I had honestly used up like all of my emotions <laughs> even before learning that because it was um, less than 24 hours after we returned from winning a national championship. And um, yeah, after, like at NCAAs, it's, it's like hardly sleeping, just like stressed all the time. And then super early morning flight come in and it's like, oh, I don't want to go. Why does why does Bob want to meet at nine thirty a.m. on <laughs> on Monday now, um, and then walk in? It's like oh, okay, <laughs> oh that's why. Okay, you're like oh, all right, yeah. So it was definitely, um, I mean, really unexpected is the only only way to describe that. But I feel like now it's settling in. Now it's kind of finding a rhythm to that and what to do, how to do it. Um, but, but now it's, now it's starting to be a, a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying it. And then like, what are you most excited about? Like now heading into your first full season as a head coach for the team, like what's something that you think you're looking forward to the most? I think you're really just doing it in a philosophy that I've always really dreamed of. And now that we have a staff that's, that's like incredible. I mean, really I like it, really better than what I thought would ever be like even an option for um, my first year as a head coach and having it. Um, I mean, we have somebody like Dave Salo, who's incredibly experienced and done kind of everything I hope to do in this sport. And then also Corey Manley, who's the data scientist and has the ability to apply everything in the way that I've always, always dreamed of doing. Um, and then doing that alongside people who've been been helping me out the whole way with Derek Schmidt, Logan Herka, Alex Sherman. Um, it, it's it's a really exciting um, time because it really really kind of has everything that I could I could ever hope for in um, just coworkers and and just an environment to um, hopefully continue to grow and really help grow the team. You know, I like I just want to pay you a compliment here real quick. Hire, when I saw that you guys had hired Dave Salo, I'm like, yeah. oh my god, that is a stroke of genius. Yeah. <laughs> like, to be able to pull in somebody of that caliber, yeah. like, is going to do nothing but help the team and, like, strengthen oh, yeah. the team overall. Like, so as soon as I saw that hiring had happened, I'm like, oh my god, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I felt the exact same way. I was, <laughs> I was pretty excited. <laughs> so... If you're comfortable sharing, um, what were some of the final conversations you had with Bob, like before the announcement was made, like when you had first found out, and then like the last conversations you had with him before he officially moved over to Texas? So the last conversation I had before I found out was was when I came in that morning, Monday. Um, it was maybe. No long. It was probably a three-minute conversation of like, okay, this is happening. Um, administration's gonna come over here and talk to you pretty soon. Um, he was, just said, "I'm I'm going to Texas," and and really that's it. And then it was like kind of chaos for <laughs> for a couple hours because <laughs> it was April Fool's Day too. <laughs> yeah, it was also April. Yeah, and then it was like, okay, doing everything with administration on that end. Um, then I, if, if we had a conversation, I, I, I literally don't remember having it because it was come back. Then we had a team meeting at two and that was another like 
maybe two, three minute conversation when, when he told them like, Hey, this is, this is happening. I got a flight at four 30. I'm, I'm going there right oh. now. Um, yeah. And then it was like kind of, um, me talking to, <laughs> to the whole team of like, okay, yeah, like I'm, I'm the head coach now. This is something that's super exciting for me. And yeah, there was a lot of mixed emotions um, but it was really cool seeing the the support. And now it's like, uh, I mean, kind of my goal has always been to inspire the, and really not inspire, but get everybody to realize that it's like, it's, it's a community that makes success. Like all the success we had was so much bigger than one, two, three people. It's like kind of how, how the whole group works together. Um, and now being able to really double down on that and get everybody to, um, realize their part in it, I think is the most important thing. You know, and to pay you another compliment, <laughs> yeah. in, in my opinion, like having seen like how, like having heard from you, how you coach and having heard from your athletes, because I've interviewed two athletes who swam with you now and having heard from them, like how good of a coach you are, it honestly feels like we're seeing the beginning of a legacy that's similar to 50 years from now being as re as well renowned as like an Eddie Reese or a Mike Bottom or all of these coaches who have or a John or Banchek who've had all this legacy within swimming it feels like now you being the head coach at ASU is almost like a storybook moment that will lead to that oh no. well thank you I, I hope so I <laughs> now I got, now it's now the pressure's on but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I appreciate that you, you know, we talked a few months ago, and like it was in early February or, or early March, um, about like how you felt and what it meant for you to be such a driving force on the team, having been an alumni and having been a part of, really an integral part of that team's revival in like the early 2010s. What does it mean for you now, with all of that in mind, to have the added legacy to your name of being the head coach of the team? Like what yeah, would I mean, what would like twenty ten you think of where you are right now? Yeah, um, that's yeah, that's that's hard to say. I think I mean twenty ten me would obviously be super excited. And I know this sounds kind of weird, but I I feel like twenty ten me would have kind of expected this more than like twenty twenty one me, twenty twenty two me, um, because that's something that I always like and it was weird to literally, literally like kind of always always dreamed of doing that at a at a high level um and it's easier to kind of expect those things when you're younger and don't really know what <laughs> what all it takes um but yeah I, it's something that like i was always into the um like training philosophy and, and understanding that side of, of of swimming that's what i've been most drawn to and most excited about. So now, now really like actually being able to apply it, however, really, however I, I want is, <laughs> is crazy to think and, and really exciting. Um, but yeah, it's, it's also like, I think a testament to not forget about everybody who's been a part of it along the way. Cause it's, that's, what's so cool about a team is that it's like this collection of roughly, um, 60 70 people and they're always changing and it's like okay over time they're all completely different but it's still the same team um and to see it move in the direction that we've always wanted has been really cool and now it's um figuring out how to how to keep it there and keep getting it um even even better than it is and in my opinion i think the core of it always stays at um like right after the team was cut and the, the dream was to just okay let's just be a team um, it was like, cause we want everybody to have an opportunity to be the best version of themselves they can be. Um, and I think that's, that's really the battle now is to make sure that remains the goal and not get, uh, like lost in the sauce now that we've had some success and think it's all about, um, chasing that success. It's more about the internal journey. And if we're doing that, then, then all the success will take care of itself. Um, but but I think that's a lot more difficult <laughs> than than it may sound. You know, it's obviously a completely different situation, and it's a much less intensive situation. But like for me, like m for me, my coaching history was always like I was 
I coach for all the teams in my area. I was like age group coaching or assistant coaching. And then this summer, I got hired on to be the head coach for my old summer league team. Like when I, yeah. I swam on the team when I was like 15 or 16. And I kind of had that full circle moment of like some of these kids, like when I was 15, I, they were six and unders. Yeah. And now I'm like in the position where I'm coaching them as an, as an adult. Yeah. And it, it was a very surreal moment to be able to hire on a coaching staff and work with them and collaborate with them. And I kind of started to understand how like it is really a team effort of oh, like yeah. you can't just do one thing alone. Like you need assistant coaches who can, I mean, especially when I, when I was gone for two weeks at trials, <laughs> like yeah. being able to have the confidence to know that my coaches could keep up the team with where they were at is it's obviously a much different situation, but I think the emotions and the pressures that are involved are fairly similar. Oh yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. And that's what it, it's cool. Like how you don't even really know it. At least I didn't know it of these parts that you do in coaching, how that prepares you for the next thing. Cause it's like, okay, when I had to hire a staff, it's like, okay, this is something I'd never done. Um, something that nobody really tells you <laughs> how to do it. Um, <laughs> But then it's like, oh, this is actually like exactly like recruiting. And I've done that a thousand times. Um, so so it's, it's, it's similar that way. But but yeah, I think it's it's exactly that. And it's the same thing of having um, faith, confidence in other people and like teaching um, assistant coaches and allowing them to be the best version of themselves and guiding them, but still letting them do it their way is, is uh, a fun kind of much new adventure for me, which I'm, I'm really excited about doing it um, long-term. I had a, I had a, I had a girl who reached out and asked to be a coach on the team. She's 15. She's never coached in her life. Yeah. Um, Cause she her sister was swimming on the team and she really wanted to be a coach. And we were like, all right, I'll like have her come tr try it out. And she's been like either in the water, out of the water, the kids asking questions, like constantly being like, am I doing this right? Or what, how can I like, she'll recognize like this person is doing something wrong with their butterfly. How can I tell them what are the right combination of words? So it's so much fun. Like for me being like the head coach of the team, being able to see not only the kids develop, but the coaches develop too. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what is, is cool. And it's like exciting to be a part of that. And that's what, yeah, like the next chapter, I guess, is, is what, what I'm excited to, to see and figure out um, is exactly that to where it's like we have these um, coaches who are really good at what they do. And it's like the question for me is how do we how do we get them better and how do we allow them to continue growing? And it's, it's an interesting dynamic because it's like the most success is, is having them lead, which is something I don't want, but they should, like they'll, I'm sure in time to come, they're gonna have great offers at other schools where it's like, okay, they're getting to move on from their career. And that's like um, something that, yeah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be really proud of to see them continue. And it's like, not that, not, trying to do that without the ego of like, oh yeah, I, I made them, made them good because that's not correct at all. But it's, it's just an interesting dynamic to think of like, okay, the best success that I can give you is to go, like go up, <laughs> go somewhere else. Um, <laughs> which you obviously don't, don't want, don't want it to be to happening too quickly. <laughs> but um, yeah, but, to, but like, I know how the career works and, and yeah, giving them that ability and autonomy to, to do that and then go off and be successful um is is an exciting thing and it's like um hoping that okay my position is very permanent and then everybody else is is mostly permanent but there's there's times when those move on then it's like okay how do we restart and get somebody improving there faster because it's the same way as okay a couple years ago and it was like if we could have somebody go 42 in the 100 free that would be amazing and now it's like okay we got to figure out how to be get there faster um it's the same way in 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 just a slightly different view of the sport to where now they're controlling like a large group of people um, rather than myself, just controlling, not controlling, but working with individuals. Um, but yeah, it's definitely exciting and kind of um, 
now that things have chilled out a little bit, I'm able to to think <laughs> think a bit more, which I'm also excited about. Um, but yeah, it's 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 really fun and a really cool um, just field and career to to be able to do. You know, I literally had like an example of this this morning with a swimmer that I coach, who like she's 14 and she's immensely coachable. Like everything yeah. that I tell her, she immediately is thinking about it and comes in and asks me specifically, like, am I doing this or like, what can I do? And I remember like, I knew early on in the season that she would be a kid who I would enjoy working with because yeah. I gave her a challenging 100 IM set and it was a, it was a 100 IM, like some 50s easy, like 350s easy and then a 100 IM and both of the hundreds were from a dive and were all out. Mm -hmm. And... The first one she did, I think she went like two seconds off of her lifetime best. And then the second one she did, she went a best time. And like, I saw that, like that spark flicker and she was like, it's going to be an amazing summer. Oh yeah. And I, I knew from that moment, like, all right, this kid is going to be fun to coach. And now she's, um, t she's going to move on to a year round team and continue swimming. Oh, nice. So it's one of those things where you're right. Like it's you obviously can't take credit for somebody's accomplishments and for what they're able to do, but you can be proud of having like a certain part in it. Yeah. Of like, of like giving them at least some of the tools that they've used to be successful. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's just, it's just like kind of creating an environment and allowing their own abilities, their own desire to, to flourish in yeah. that environment. 